Welcome, Bent Riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. How are you all doing today? It's great to have you with us. Got an interesting show to share with you today. Let me tell you a little bit about this uh, town hall version of the Laid Back Bike Report that we have for you today. Uh, our goal for the town halls is to bring you, the viewers, on and share your stories. Uh, we like to have industry leaders on with us as well for uh, Ask Me Anything sessions. And we are going to have a panel discussion today. We've been trying to get to those and run out of time the last couple of shows. So today we're going to do it. Uh, I promise. So uh, what is in today's town hall webcast? Well, we have Marco Ruga, uh, an Italian recumbent writer, builder, racer, and uh, advocate, and a very interesting guy. Uh, really, I'm glad to have met him, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy uh, hearing him and hearing what he does. Also, some uh, a name that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, it's Pat Franz from TerraCycle in Portland, Oregon. Pat is going to be with us um, to do a uh, Ask Me Anything session. So, Keep it in mind, if you guys have questions about any kind of accessories or add-ons for your bikes or trikes, Pat is the expert. So throw those questions into the live chat. Uh, he will be on uh, in the second half of the show, but you can throw those questions on there anytime, and we will ask Pat to answer those uh, for you. Um, yeah, so I think at this point, we will go ahead and uh, meet the amazing crew that helps me out uh, each week, and today we have, let's see, Larry, uh, bring on, uh, that's it for now, right? Okay, we have, first of all, Larry Seidman from Colorado Springs, Colorado, doing the directing today, Larry. Hello, hello and everyone. Great to have you doing the work uh, on the uh, push buttons, uh, Larry. We have uh, down in Jackson, Mississippi, our buddy Trey Burgoyne. Trey, how are you doing today? Hello, everybody. Trey will be handling the uh, media, as he always does, and he does a great job with that. Down in uh, Big D, Dallas, Texas, uh, it is the bicycle evolution dude, Mr. Wizard. Hey. Are there any more names? There probably are. Uh, yeah, I guess we are. My one for the view of chose ones. Yeah. Doug Davis, folks. That's good to have you with us, Doug. And uh, down on the Withacoochee Trail, it is Denny Voorhees handling the moderation today. In moderation, I hope. In Denny. moderation, exactly. I was just going to say the same thing, Gary. We're thinking the same way. All right. Glad to have you with us. And showing up, sliding into home plate at the very last second, it's Peter Stoll, the bicycle man from Alfred hey. Station, New York. Hey, Peter. Hey, how you doing? We are very glad to have you with us today, as always. Okay, and I know how glad he is to be with us. Too. I'm glad to be here, yes. All right, guys. <laughs> okay, we will see you a little bit later on. Let's move along with the show by talking about our amazing sponsors. Leading off our sponsors are TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. And Trailside.bike a fine recumbent bike shop on the Withacoochee Trail in Florida. For a limited time, get a free trike for your buddy when you buy a new Azub or HP trike at Trailside. Check the link in the description below for restrictions and details. And Cruise Bike, designed for the cyclist who wants to ride farther, climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. And Terra Trike. With the cancellation of the Terra Trike Rider Fest, we are now offering three virtual riding events. Every participant in these rides will receive an entry into a raffle for a new Terra Trike of their choice, including the much anticipated Terra Trike Spider and GTS. Ride what you like, but get out and ride. Look for details on the TerraTrike website at terratrike.com slash riderfest or on the TerraTrike Facebook page. And the Hostel Shop. The Hostel Shop wants to make sure your only fever is spring fever. Now through April 30th, use the code SPRINGFEVER 
to get $250 off any recumbent purchase over $1,150. Now get outside and practice some fun social distancing. All right, guys. So as promised, let me uh, bring on my first, my first guest here today from Italy. It is Marco Ruga. Marco, hello. Hello. Ciao to tutti. Hello. And there, what's your daughter's name? What's your name? Sophia. Sophia, it's very nice to have you and your dad on with us today. I know you help your dad. I've seen some of the videos, so it's great to have you on. All right, uh, Marco, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Tell everybody uh, where you are and what you do there in Italy. Yes. First of all, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, I like the show very much. I saw it many times and so on. You're a very famous YouTuber. Well, I, I am 45. I'm from the northern uh, of Italy, near Milan. Uh, I'm an engineer, but uh, I'm a lover of everything that has wheels. So I started uh, from my passion. That uh, my, my first passion is uh, um, single-seater uh, cars, racing cars. Uh, they are called in Italy autocross cars. So they are extra fast uh, cars. But uh, it was my, my passion for 20 years, 25 years from the university. But uh, from 2012, I found something different, that is uh, the recumbent world. And so from, uh, from that moment, uh, I tried to build, to drive, to ride, to test everything that was possible in the recumbent position, of course, with pedals. And uh, so, I'm going on this history of this story from that moment, and uh, it, it is a nice part of my life. All Maybe right, that, yeah. Let's uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I, I would love to see these slides that you've prepared. Okay. There's some amazing shots in there, and I know everybody's going to want to know about uh, what you've done and see some of those bikes. So, uh, Trey, yeah, we got it up there. Larry, let's go ahead and. Uh, Get on those uh, on that first slide, and let's go from there, if you would, Marco. Okay, okay. So this is the starting. I don't know if Sofia knows this this bag. It is made from rubbish. So the the, the history is this one. Uh, a friend of mine, Francesco Francesco Campanino. Uh, we have this, we share the same passion for cars, recent cars. One day he told me, "Hey, Marco, I'm doing a try. I'm making a trike. I want to drive it." Uh, on on the, the road on the road on common road and i told him what's a trike it's a kind of bicycle with three wheels so you can go everywhere you want and i told him you are so crazy uh, you are the craziest people of all because in italy it's it's a great challenge to go uh, with your bike on roads especially with that uh, uh, very strange thing it's it's a weird thing so uh, how can you do it but then, but since then, uh, I have Google uh, recumbent, recumbent bytes. I didn't know even what they were because in Italy, you don't even see any. Uh, in the last years, uh, just friends, friends of mine, I know every recumbent biker in Italy almost. But uh, since, since it's uh, 10 years that some bikes, some recumbent bikes you can see on road. But before, in the, the year 2000, no, there wasn't. There wasn't uh, almost any any bike. So you can uh, in Italy you can see bikes uh, on the internet, and uh, on some occasions uh, there are uh, there are some races, uh, but uh, it's not very often. So I started from scratch, and uh, the thing was uh, I cannot make a track because it's so complicated. I don't even know how to uh, how, where to start. So I started from some rubbish uh, parts of uh, mountain bikes I had in my cellar. And uh, because I, I know some way to, to weld in two days, it's just a two days work it is, I started to build this, uh, this kind of bike. It's a, it's a, uh, strangely, it's a traction direct, uh, meaning uh, it's uh, like a, let's say a cruise bike. So it's a four, um, four wheel drive. And uh, it's strange because uh, this geometry is the one that in this moment I like a lot and we'll see in the later uh, pictures. But at that moment uh, I could uh, 
just drive it on the road. But after some, uh, some meters, some kilometers, I, I found out to drive it properly. So that starts uh, there in that moment starts my love for recumbent bikes. Uh, you can find on my YouTube, YouTube channel uh, just uh, a video of this first ride. And I was meet with my daughter. She was two years old, uh, one and a half actually years old. And uh, we were uh, riding today together with these strange things, uh, strange thing, very strange. But after I, I had a, a long ride with that bike, 80 kilometers, so it is uh, 50 miles. And um, it was strange because I could do that distance without pain on my back, uh, on my shoulders, very strange. And so I found what was at the, at the moment I found what was the difference between a common road bike and a recumbent. And, um, but I, I, it was, it wasn't uh, what I want. I wanted something more. And so, uh, please, the next one, I tried uh, something more, a another strange construction. It is very similar uh, actually with uh, my, uh, my most recent bike. Uh, but uh, it has some, a lot of issues from which I learned a lot because it has an head tube, a fork that is very horizontal and uh, it is quite heavy. It has a very high low, uh, bottom bracket. So technically it's not very drivable. In fact, I hurt myself. I, I, I hurt my shoulder uh, falling down. And from that moment, I, I tell myself no more bikes like this. It, okay. it's not, it's Marco, not could you um, give us an idea of a timeline here? I'm not really sure about that. I, it is 2012. 2012. So yeah, I just if you could just throw that in every once in a while. I like to see the progression of of what you do. That's great. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. If it if it is in uh, in interest, uh, I I'm I'm talking about all the the years and the, the what I I've made in the year. So okay, maybe you can focus just on the progression. Okay. 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 So. Uh, no more bike like this because it is dangerous. It is. I thought that uh, that geometry was the be the the worst of all, the worst of all. But actually, it was not because next one. I um, now we'll talk about it later. Then I have I tried to to make a trike because I wanted to know my aim is. Okay, recumbent bike, but which is the best for my aim? For my, I, I want to ride somewhere. Which is the best uh, recumbent? So I have to test all the geometry I can, and in uh, in my cellar I can weld, uh, I can uh, make some, um, let's say, production to test uh, every geometry, every every form of recumbent. So the trike. This is the first trike. It is 2013. And uh, it is a very simple trike. It is made of mountain bike uh, parts, so it made of steel. As you see, it has a double chain, so it has a, um, a very high power loss uh, in the chains. Uh, the wheels are not very fast, but it was fun to drive because it uh, could stand still by itself. And it is Sophia. She's she was so young; she was two years old, as you see. And she liked uh, to drive a, a trike very much because she could use it. She could she could uh, use the handlebars, so she couldn't make uh, some power on the pedals. But uh, that was fun. And after next slide, please. But as uh, I, I my aim was of course to, to concentrate not on a geometry but to all the old geometry and on the um, on a. I, I followed at the moment uh, a famous uh, forum uh, on the internet. It is uh, the uh, Bici Reclinata Italia. You can find on the internet. You can find a lot of uh, discussion with the technical speeches and so on. And there uh, we discussed about uh, which is the best, uh, let's say, geometry for a two wheel uh, bike. And I, of course, I had to test the most common of, of the all, the road, the rear wheel drive. It was fun to drive. It was uh, quite uh, light. It is um, this bike is made is a uh, it's made from aluminium and partly from uh, from steel on the boom and there is a reinforcement with screws 
and uh, some carbon fiber. It, uh, that was my first try with the carbon fiber. So uh, it was not perfect, of course, but but worked. It was, uh, I think, 13 kilos uh, heavy, maybe 14. And it had all the, the components from a road bike. Here, it is uh, my factory. I, I work uh, here. Um, I, my work is completely different from bikes. Uh, I work in the, uh, let's say, uh, thermostatic st stuff, uh, ther thermic stuff. We made some valves for, uh, for heating and cooling. But uh, uh, I, in my factory, and I want to underline this because it's very important to know, to, to understand uh, the Italian way of uh, thinking. In my factory, we are fifth, uh, um, 500 people and uh, by bike in summer so where it's better to, to go on the bike we are in three or two or three when it is very very nice four people so four per 500 people so imagine something that uh, happens and this happened that i come by bike no one comes by bike in my factory i come by bike with our common bike and next, I come by bike, but not with our camel, but a velomobile, with a velomobile. Um, people got crazy. Some, some people, uh, some friends of mine told me, uh, well, it's a nice, what's, what's that? It's a little tiny car with uh, an electric motor. Uh, yes, no, it's a velomobile. What's a velomobile? We never saw something strange like that. And then uh, some of my friends liked but I think almost of them uh, I, I think, and at the moment think I am a crazy guy. Uh, that, that's definitely like that. Because um, this is a, um, let's say, it's not a real very mobile. It is called the Zephyrus. It is a first try for me and a friend of mine that uh, is Jonathan. And uh, we worked together in this project. In this project, it all began from uh, the Bici Recreate Italia Forum. The question was: Is it possible to make a fairing for a trike uh, and to make it uh, comfort com comfortable and uh, uh, easy to drive on the roads? So we together in I think six months, uh, and we are in 2014, I think at the moment. Uh, we tried to make a molding. And it, it was very expensive in uh, many hours, so it was very difficult. The, we made a lot of mistakes, but we, come, we came to this, uh, let's say, Velo Mobile. In fact, it is a fairing. Inside, there is a KMX uh, drive, KMX, I don't know the name, is, I think it's the same. It's one of the simplest strikes uh, we, we could uh, make them. Marco, and, uh, can I interrupt for just a second? So uh, Mark Sturdivant yes. wants to know, we, we see the name Dream Cycle and the uh, website yes. on that previous, but can you, uh, is this a good time for you to tell us about that or do you want to wait until Yes, uh, Dream Cycle was uh, a project. Uh, I think it is, uh, uh, now it is uh, existing. Uh, it was a project uh, we took uh, together, he and my friend Jonathan, but um, Soon after, I went away because there was some issues because uh, we needed a lot of time, a lot of work to take it uh, to the end. So I let it just to Jonathan, but I think he has uh, taken to the road eight or nine of these. But this is a prototype. Uh, this is uh, the version I used. I used it to go to work and uh, we had some tests on this. It is made of fiberglass, so it is quite heavy. Uh, the, the other versions are made of uh, carbon fiber. You can find some details on the Dream Cycle website. And, uh, um, but as, you, as I saw, as I um, said, uh, I went away from some, I had some problems uh, with, with the time. Uh, almost okay. for, for the time, I didn't have enough time to follow everything. But sure. it was very, very nice because at the time uh, we um, showed some picture on uh, Facebook, on some Facebook pages. Then the, um, the papers took these pictures and make some articles. And a uh, famous radio at the moment, Radio DJ, that is uh, a radio that spread uh, to, through all the Italy, through all the Italy, um, we had an interview with, uh, with a speaker. And then we, we went to the RAI. Uh, I don't know if you know RAI. RAI is uh, the public TV, uh, TV of Italy. So we went on a TV show and we show this, uh, this uh, mobile. No one knew about that, 
but uh, we had a lot of success uh, because many, many, many friends of mine that didn't know anything about Avalo Mobile told me, I saw you on the TV. Oh, great. You are a great guy. That's a Thank great way much. to get started and to get some public. Great way. Like but since nice. that, there were some other problems because, you know, everyone that uh, knows how to make a mobile knows it is not as easy as make a bike the fairing is, is the most difficult you have, you've got to make a common a mold and you need uh, let's say 50 hour man hour to make just almost uh, the, a single velo mobile plus all the other work so i went away for that um, my work is something different so i couldn't uh, i couldn't stay inside this project but it was extremely nice to show it to millions of people because it was definitely a million people we were in rome uh, the night before and the people got crazy the craziest people was a couple of americans that told us it is the, the the better thing i have ever seen in my life and uh, it gave me a lot of satisfaction because uh, speaking to american people is different than speaking to italian Italian are somewhat, oh, yes, what's that? Mm. Then, then when you put it inside, they are excited. But from the outside, they say, mm, there's only the car that can go on the road. What's that? Um, I don't know how to say in, uh, in, in English, supposta. That, <laughs> uh, yeah, they're skeptical, that, I think. Uh, they're yeah, skeptical they until they actually skeptical, see. Skeptical, very skeptical. Right. It's let's not, move uh, along here a little bit if we can, though, Marco. We yes, yes, let's go. Let's go fast. Sure. This picture is from the Monza Formula One track. It is the 2015 uh, um, uh, Italian Championship, recumbent Italian Championship. And uh, I was, uh, I think, with the Zephyro third of my category. Uh, on the back, you see uh, Giovanni Upani. Uh, I think you, you know, or someone knows uh, Giovanni Upani with his quest. And it was faster than me, even with this kind of prototype, very, very badly assembled on a track. So it, uh, I, I, my average speed was 35, I think. This was quite, uh, it was not uh, the fastest, but. Uh, it was fast for me, very, very nice. Then next, and it is a picture from uh, that edition of the Italian Championships. As you see, you see the quest, the, the extra fast, uh, uh, other... Uh, yeah, the I see Giovanni Iopani there, the, the uh, heretic. Yes, from the heretic, you see yes. on, the, on the side of the... Yeah. Uh, the He's mobile. a great guy, yeah. And he owns, uh, he owns a bike shop there in Italy as yes. well, right? Uh-huh, yes, yes. incumbent shop. Okay, yes. let's move along. Let's move. Then, I, uh, but uh, I did like Velomobiles. So we have a friend of mine that is Matteo Del Chirico. Uh, he's got a mango. Uh, so he has, uh, he is one of the three, four, five people that has a Velomobile in Italy at the moment. Now, I think we have uh, some other, uh, some more Velomobiles, but not, not a lot. We tried to make something by ourselves. So. I've tried. I tried to make something without a mold. So uh, maybe you can see in my YouTube channel all the co construction, um, the construction um, process, and uh, it is made of. My idea was, if I don't, since I don't uh, use a mold, what can I use? So it is made of fiberglass sheets put together and glued together. And uh, as you see, there's uh, some polyurethane uh, stuff made just to, uh, to make some different forms. So next one, here you see the, the sheet uh, with the design of uh, Matteo and the, the real one. So I'm trying to copy the same. And uh, at the end, next one. And, and inside, I just wanted to use the same, the same uh, principle of the, the Zephyrus, so a trike inside. This is a strike made by myself. It is made from square pipe, so it is uh, easy. I think it is quite easy to, to make. Everything it is, well, is welded by myself, but uh, the aluminum is not welded. They are all screwed by, they are screwed. So let's say it, it could be uh, made by anyone, I think, because you, you, you don't use a welder, an aluminum welder. I cannot weld aluminum, so it can, uh, it can be built by 
almost everyone. Just only the seat is made of fiberglass, so let's say it's uh, something like a copy of a commercial seat. That, that, that's it. And another other picture, this is me in a race, in a Formula One uh, pedal car race, we will talk uh, later. I was first of that day, it was in BL, uh, we were in the parking of, uh, of a supermarket. It was so fun, it was so fast, but uh, Formula, One per the, Formula One per the cars are faster in, the, in, in that occasion. Uh, so next one, this is the final result. So this is the 43, as you see, it has a, a very spammon, I think, uh, uh, number. It is the love bug number. So maybe you have seen the picture. The yes, movie. that's Herbie the love bug, yes? Yes, 53. it's Herbie. 53, in Italian, yeah. Maggiolino Tutto Matto. And so people uh, on, on the road saw this, this strange thing with the, the number 43 and uh, got crazy. I haven't used it a lot uh, on the roads. Uh, because uh, maybe we'll talk later, it's, let's say, it's weird, it's uh, dangerous, but uh, it's strange to go with these things. Even the police uh, don't look you very well, even though you are road legal. I, am, I was road legal. As you see, I have all the lights, uh, I have um, the direction lights and so on. So it was road legal. I used it uh, on the competition. Next one. Of course, there was uh, the edition of uh, 2016, I think. I was uh, with uh, this uh, Velomobile. It is called the Aries, Iris. I was against all these uh, uh, super fast uh, people. As you see, the, the, there are some Velomobiles that uh, compete uh, in the World Championship. And I was, uh, in that occasion, uh, seventh of overall with uh, uh, an average speed of 52. So it was quite uh, fast. Um, it was not the fastest, of course, because it was a do-it-yourself mobile. It was, uh, I think, 30 kilos uh, heavy. And uh, since uh, I, I was with, two, with uh, 250 watt, uh, I had that uh, average speed while RDF reaches 60. So it was eight uh, kilometers lower. So a good, a good performance, I think, for, uh, for that kind of uh, mobile made in my cell. Good, and it is uh, this. This is Mangos, um, Mateus Mangos, Mateus Mango, uh, side by side with my Venom Mobile. I was faster than a, than a Mango, definitely faster, because um, on not only the aerodynamics, but we had a study on the transmission, so the transmission was very very neat, and so we had um, little uh, power loss on the transmission, while the Mango has a two chain transmission and uh, we saw it uh, live uh, on the track so i was uh, definitely faster than him and it was uh, satisfied this is uh, sofia yeah, she is uh, of course uh, older than the other pictures as you see it is a track inside there's a, a rare fearing so uh, a tail box you can use it just with a tail box i didn't use it but you can and there's a for there's this front nose you can uh, get up and get inside. So different from all the other mobiles. Lot of fun, lot of fast uh, races, uh, but on the roads, uh, it's, it's a challenge. The roads, I didn't use it. Um, even on corners, of course, as you know, mobiles, if you make some fast corners, you it's dangerous some, somewhere. I didn't have any issues with it, but uh, I didn't use it uh, on the roads. So that's it. And this is another study. I, uh, for my study, I did I, so I did a first strike, a, recam a recumbent wheel, a velomobile, and I wanted to know uh, how much fast could go a trike. So this is a, let's say, very narrow trike. It has a track of uh, 50 centimeter, I think 53 centimeter, that is very narrow. narrow. So uh, I wanted something that uh, was as fast as possible. As you see, it, is, it has a 28 uh, inches uh, wheel at the back, and uh, the position is quite, uh, let's say, the seat position is quite horizontal with uh, a central steering that gives uh, it uh, good aerodynamics. With my test, I didn't have a, a pedal power steering system to, to know how much was the, the real power, but 
uh, since uh, um, road bike, a TT road bike uh, reaches uh, 40, 42, 40 kilometers per hour with 250 watt, it reaches 43, 44. So, so 43 is faster, faster than a TT bike. And uh, well, it, is, was a good, it was a good construction and made from aluminum and partly carbon. Here we come to a completely different uh, uh, cap cap uh, episode. So it is, uh, uh, it is called the V. It, I started from always from Bicere Clinic Italia Forum. The discussion was, was uh, an extra long discussion. And uh, uh, the title was, uh, what the, which, which is the best uh, geometry for a recumbent for going uphill? What is? And so everyone uh, has a, an idea, an idea. For someone is uh, a bike with uh, small wheels. For someone is a bike with three wheels. Uh, for someone is uh, a road, uh, a rear, rear wheel drive and so on. But um, my aim was to take something that was as light as possible, as simple as possible, and to have a position for the rider as comfortable as, pos as possible on a pill. So I started from the cross bike because I thought that if something goes a pill fast is a cross bike, definitely. Because the first thing is for an engineer, power losses. And the, ch the chain is very, is very short. So it cannot be compared to a rear wheel drive because a rear wheel drive has an extra long chain, even if you, you have uh, an extra, um, let's say, uh, extra good uh, chain passage. It's a long chain. So when I pedal, I put my, ex my power on the pedals, the chain uh, works like a, a spring. So what I wanted to know is to recreate the sensation of a road bike on a recommend bike, because I liked it, a recommend bike. Anyway, I don't use only recumbent bikes. I use uh, road bikes uh, and the mountain bikes and so on. So I can compare and uh, I, I train with all, all the bikes. So when I make some test, I can compare actually because if someone always uses, uses a recumbent bike, he cannot test specifically all the geometries. So that, that's the point. And for, for me, for me, that bike, was uh, was an, uh, um, a surprise because uh, it was something very similar to my previous bike but uh, it was drivable it was definitely drivable because of two things very low bottom bracket it is uh, as high as the, the seat um, high seat angle it is uh, adjustable but from 30 to 40 degrees maybe 25 and uh, Another, another thing, it has a very um, vertical head tube angle. So the fork is vertical. It, it has the same geometry of a road bike. In fact, it's, it's for and it is light. Its performance on appeal, it's uh, very, very, for this one, it was very similar to my, let's say, Strava times. So my best performance with the road bike, not, not very far. The difference was, uh, Five to from five to ten percent. Here I am in Imola. I want to underline a thing with this uh, with this picture. Here we are in Imola. There is a famous uh, appeal uh, hill that is called the Tosa. Uh, if you see the pictures on the Formula One races, you 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 may think it is flat. No, it is definitely not flat. It is ten percent average gradient. So. I, the, the best test for this bike is in this occasion. You can take a, a um, position that is very similar to the sensation of a road bike when you go, let's say, out of the seat, out of the, the saddle, because you use different uh, uh, muscles, these different um, parts of your legs from a rear wheel drive. On a rear wheel drive, your position is that and that only. You cannot. Uh, uh, take another position with your uh, spine, with your back. You are 
stuck over there. And so if you make, and that was my sensation, a lot of uh, kilometers with that position fixed, uh, at, at some, some moment you cannot uh, make uh, the, the effort you want. Instead, with this kind of bike, because you have a lot of space between your body and your handlebar, you can go vertical. And this position, I assure you, it is sustainable. Of course, you must be, let's say, quite tall, because if you are very short, uh, the, the handlebar is very, is very close to your seat and so to your body. But uh, me and my friends uh, tried a lot uh, of this position, and we we um, the sensation was and not the sensation even the power it was that you can have uh, you can improve performance appeal and after for that i, I have spread this uh, let's say position over my uh, friends i've talked a lot about these things and many friends of mine of course wanted to know uh, how does how did that uh, that uh, that bike behave by herself by themselves? So next one, I made the first. Uh, it's, it is called the rev. Rev means re v. So v it's like v v v v twenty like the cross bike. Re v means another version of another interpretation interpretation of. And it is made from a road bike. I cut a road bike. It was a, a Fuji, I think, made of carbon. And it is this was the first try with carbon for me. So you can find on my YouTube channel all all the construction procedure with all the with all the, the pictures. And so you can find how I made it. And it was fast, very fast. It was a, a light, 10 kilos light, and uh, I liked it uh, very much. And my friend Alessandro. It was the first one that uh, believes believed in this project. Uh, now uses it is use it, uh, it uh, on the roads uh, today. So it's a good bike. That's Still a beautiful a bike. looking bike too. Beautiful design. It was a, the first try for me to make something made of carbon. So very nice. On the back it is some older. You can you can take uh, your wallet because uh, it is a fairing on the on the back. You know I don't know if you see that. Uh, the flat panel it's made of carbon but uh, it's just a uh, object holder so right next there. one uh -huh. i don't know if there are some question or or uh, i i may speak uh, yeah, I keep on going. I, i've been putting some of the comments people have been making very nice comments but uh, you could go ahead and and marco just if you want to back off just uh, a few centimeters from that mic because okay. you're a little bit too close, I think, some of the time. I know you're trying to watch the, the pictures there, too. So you're doing fine. You're doing great. Go ahead. OK, OK. So go ahead. I, 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 am, uh, I am very a lover of my bikes. So I want uh, to, to speak with some enthusiasts. And maybe uh, I, I may talk a lot, uh, maybe too much about that. So, so I, I try to, to go with a uh, higher speed. This is my rev, my personal rev, so it's for taller people. That one is was the V, so it was made from aluminum and carbon. This is made all from from carbon. It is 9.3 uh, kilograms uh, heavy, so it's uh, lighter. I am at the Montarone. Montarone is a let's say famous mountain. Mountain uh, over you can see over there on the, in the last camp there's Milan, and here you can see all the beautiful lakes near me. There's the Lake Maggiore, Lake of Arese. It's definitely a, a, a dream to, to, um, to ride in, near me in, in the Montarone in these places, as you, as you see. With this bike, uh, actually, it, is a, it has a single chain ring because I made some tests about it. With this bike on the Montarone, I've made it uh, um, with the road bike. It is uh, a 55, uh, 55 minutes performance uh, with all my power. With this bike, I had made it with 56 uh, minutes. Same effort, same power, same everything. So what I wanted to underline is that a road bike for me and for my fitness, let's say, a road bike is very, very close to this bike. With a road bike, you can maybe 
it's um, let's say it's easier to drive on the corners and uh, if the the appeal is very nervous and so on but with that with that uh, bike you can go as fast as a road bike um, and uh, if you use uh, of course uh, some uh, light wheels and so on you can go exactly as a road bike for Marco, me. let me uh, let me hold you up here a second. So there's uh, Larry Oslin, who knows you and has met you, I believe, and uh, he's enjoying uh, what you're saying here. Um, a couple of quick questions. Uh, what's the name of your YouTube channel? Marco Ruga. The name is my name, Marco <clears throat> Ruga. And uh, don't worry, I will have the link, uh, of course, for Marco's uh, amazing YouTube channel in the uh, description below when we get done here, too. Thank you very much. Another question, Upright Mike, how tall are you, Marco? I am 1 meter 86, uh, uh, 7, actually, centimeter tall. I don't know in uh, in the American uh, I think one of our version. one of our viewers might uh, do the conversion quite and tall. pop it in there. So, yeah. Quite not extra tall but quite tall so i can use uh, uh, 28 inches wheels uh, with uh, a lot of spaces for me on, on that good. geometry okay let's go ahead on to the next and let's see what we have yes this, what i want to know is is not what i want to underline is not my job but uh, i have a lot of friends and many of these friends wanted to know how the behave of this bike so i made a rev for my uh, great friend of mine that is serafino he is 55 but he is uh, so strong a strong rider and he gave me his uh, uh, very expensive bianchi oltre i cut i cut it uh, and i made this one so uh, it is a bianchi oltre transformed um, next one this is another another version. This is uh, Paolo's version. It is not not made by me, but a friend of mine, a great friend, another great friend of mine, uh, had some uh, problems with uh, his back, with his spine. He had some surgery and so on. So one day he told me, "What can I do? Hey, you can make something like a rev, a cross bike, something like that. Why don't you try?" Mm, I don't I don't like. Well, but he is uh, a very He's a very, he's a very uh, good, uh, uh, let's say, he can make fiberglass and carbon fiber very easily. He's very good. And he tried to make something, and that's the result. He's a very precise, very precise guy. So uh, he, that was uh, a very nice contract, construction. But the geometry is the same of mine. So, okay, Marco, let, here's a question from Andrew Allen. Great to hear about your bike, Marco. Have you thought about adding a front or a rear fairing? What's it like? And another, he, he has a few questions. What is it like to turn as the bottom bracket is right next to that front wheel? What is the turning circle like? And would a 26 or a 20 inch wheel be possible with this design? I'll leave that up there so you can see. Well, about the fairing, yes, but not on this version because it is a version study for appeal. So I don't want to, let's say, make it something different, something medium. I want a bike, this is rev, this is for going fast appeal. I don't want to add any gram. I don't want. So I am pure, let's say, on this thought. Uh, but it, I will on the other bike we'll see later. And uh, about the second question, what is it like to turn as the BB is right next to the front lead? So how easy it is to turn on the right? It is that question. Yeah, is it easy? Uh, is it hard to turn? Um, no. With the bottom uh, bracket being so No, 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 it is not. You must uh, make some practice, of course. Uh, with uh, the tightest turns, uh, you you have some issues with the handlebars because, of course, your legs are inside the handlebars. But uh, since you go vertical, it's the same, pro uh, same, same position of, uh, as before, as in Imola. If you go vertical, your your uh, uh, comfort and comfort, let's say, comfort in drive drivability is better. You drive better because you can use your back to control the bike just like the road bike, because uh, your spine is not on the seat fixed. Right. And so you can control 
the bike better. So and what about different size wheels? Well, have you experimented with different yes. size wheels? Tell us about that. Mm, on this version, no. Uh, on uh, the next version, yes. We'll talk about it later. All right. Let's <laughs> let's move along here. But um, Go ahead. I want one, another yeah. thing is that uh, this is uh, you, uh, this can be used, but by any uh, people. A friend of mine is not very tall. Let's say uh, it's 20 centimeter uh, um, less tall than me, so it, it's not very tall. But uh, the only way, the only way, the way to let him uh, use these uh, 20 h uh, 28 uh, wheels is just to get the bottom bracket, bracket make higher. So um, if you put the bottom bracket at uh, let's say 62 centimeter from the ground, you can drive it. Uh, easily it is not as easy to drive as with a low bottom bracket not too low for me the best position is as as, as the same level at the seat at the seat or just to sit better above but uh, you can uh, use it uh, let's say from that from them to eight centimeter eight ten centimeter is okay if you go higher it is uh, much worse to drive so this is my sensation and the sensation of my friends using diverse different geometry okay very good and answer. this is a, just a picture to know uh, how i build this bike i cut a bike i use that central frame that comes from my friend paolo the one before of the red uh, rev because he has a molding so we made a molding for the central part so it's two frames get together and glued. And uh, it is made not uh, from carbon fiber, let's say with epoxy, uh, with a, a cold pr procedure, but uh, from an autoclave. I don't know in, in English, uh, um, he uses uh, the carbon fiber procedures of a factory where there are uh, some parts of the Ferrari Formula One made. So it's a very extra good, uh, uh, carbon and uh, uh, uses a va vacuum procedure, so it, it is very nice. The, the central frame, the other parts are glued by with uh, glued and uh, parts of uh, different bikes cut, just just cut. Okay, okay. And Marco, we have about 15 minutes, so let's, okay, uh, I want to let you know where you I'm, are. I'm here, going fast. I don't want I'm... you, I don't want you to, to <laughs> skip anything. You're doing great, so go ahead, that's fine. Okay, I'm going faster. Uh, and this is a rev made for off-road off -road bike, off-road off paths. So it is called the Grev, Grev, Rev. For, it is a test that another friend of mine told me, why don't you make something with uh, brake disc and off-road uh, off uh, gravel, gravel uh, wheels? And that's it. it. It works, but not on stiff appeals, but it works. On the flat is good. Next one. This is uh, my first Gran Fondo. This is Sofia, of course. I made it well, and uh, I had a lot of fun, and uh, it was quite fast, quite, quite fast. The Gran Fondo, it is uh, a race uh, made uh, for, uh, let's say, everyone, but uh, there are very strong people. And uh, I was not in the first group, but I was uh, quite fast, and me and Serafino were the only two recumbents, of course. Next, next one. And this is Sofia. I made, of course, a rev for her. It is made of steel, just welded, and she liked to very much. And we had uh, we have some uh, rides together and extra fun. Let me ask a quick one here from Gork Fifty Seven, our buddy in Colorado. Are your wheels custom or are they All off custom. the shelf? Custom All wheels. Custom, because I wanted to use just road bike pieces, uh, just road bike stuff. And how about the weight distribution on those bikes? Weight distribution I, I, uh, mm -hmm. with the I I don't remember. It is I think fifty seven or fifty eight in the front uh, and the other part uh, percentage, and uh, forty two on the back. But it depends. It depends on the seat position. So it's different. On the front, you have uh, more weight. Surely, of course. Okay, like and from Upright Mike, uh, Marco, have you helped the build with the building of the super fast streamliner recumbents 
uh, at the University of Polytechnic Turin. I, I see am, you graduated from yes, there. Yes, so I graduated there, there yeah. and I am a friend of um, Paolo Baldissera, who is the chief engineer of the project. We, we always talk, we are friends, but uh, I never went in the project. Uh, so they, they race at Battle Mountain with, the, with their yes. projects. Don't I, liked, okay. I liked and uh, many compliments to the, the result and Andrea Gallo that is uh the uh, strong the strongest one of the strongest uh, riders uh, here in the grafondo in the grafondo right. in the, this competition all right let's move along here another word uh, because uh, uh, that trike that you saw at the beginning uh, i transformed it to a four wheel why because i wanted to know if a front wheel uh, a four wheel uh, uh, let's say quad uh, uh, trike uh, could uh, be a good vehicle and it is because it hasn't the issue of uh, it can go uh, as fast as hell in corners. It is f as fast as hell, this thing. And next next uh, one, it was uh, the inside of a Formula One pedal car. And this is uh, made of, uh, of course, cardboard. It's just a test. Next one, because the result is that. In this picture, you see me in the front and on the back, Mino, a great friend of mine. We had uh, a team and we compete uh, every year in the Formula One uh, Formula One Pedal Car Championship, let's say Italian, because it is only the, the only championship made a uh, meld in Italy. And I was a champion for two, two years in a row, actually three years in a row. It is a friendly competition, but everyone wants to win. So I want this is a uh, a great picture with me and my friends and uh, the competition is uh, it's extremely hard uh, it is um, a competition it is not very long just uh, half an hour but uh, in that half an hour we gi we give uh, all we have and uh, it, it was a pleasure because uh, this thing goes uh, as fast as a go-kart on the on the the bands but uh, you are the engine. So and there is Mino. That I bet you this is your friend Mino seventy three. Yes. I'm proud of being your teammate in the Formula One on pedals championship. Even though I'll never catch you, he says. Yes, I train uh, a little uh, better, and uh, yes, I am quite good in the Formula One competition. But uh, it is fun. You must try four wheel on a closed circuit. All right, you have four wheels, uh, Marco. Do you have a differential no, in the back? No, no, no. The secret of this bike, and it is uh, the version of this the last year version, it, it has uh, just a, a pipe on the back. What's the secret? It works as a go-kart. So if you make a corner, the frame itself takes the inside wheel up. So you don't need a differential. Of course, if you make a corner very slowly, doesn't work but uh, it is very narrow it is a, it has a very narrow track 50 centimeter yes 50 centimeter and on the front 75 so with the geometry and so on you can get the inside uh, rear wheel up and you don't need any differential it works well because the um, the tires uh, do, do, do not uh, are quite new you, you don't use a lot the tires so if you don't use the tires the the, the geometry is correct and uh, that's it marco let me uh, i think this uh, is going back to the two wheelers can you share uh, your fork rake and trail with us can you uh, i think he's talking about your two wheelers huh the three wheelers yes <laughs> if you see on uh, my videos i always tell you the geometry and uh, for the head tube inclination the inclination of the fork uh, is uh, 70, uh, 71, 70, from, seven, from 69 to 71 uh, bra um, uh, angle, great angle. So it is uh, 20 grade, grade from uh, the vertical position. And for the rake, uh, it is uh, three or four centimeters. It's the same of a uh, common road bike fork. So the same geometry is not different, the same. Very same. good. And back to the quad, uh, Upright Mike uh, wants to know, is there a, she, he sees you racing the, the quads, the pedal cars. Uh, is there a junior division? Is, it, is there something for kids? No, to race there are quad? some, 
maybe next year we will uh, next this one is not uh, is not probably made for not that possible. all right let's move along here we're, we're getting behind maybe the next yep um and this is the frame it is made partly from aluminium and partly for carbon fiber the other one is was made for steel the old one for meso steel so it is uh lighter of course next one Oh, the same procedure of uh, building so it has a pvc frame inside as you see the tubes are just pvc so plastic so strong and so light just for the the fairing and uh, there's the, the cardboard uh, the, the cardboard panel just for seeing if it, it works or not next one but uh, i made the nose and the the part on the back uh, just near the the helmet made from foam because i needed to make something that was curved so it has a shape and i i this is the result i just used carbon fiber on the foam and then uh, i gave it it, it, it this is the final, final result the next one me building the nose made of foam and uh, all the stuff uh, made in pvc extra strong another part of the building you see everything on my youtube channel next one and uh, this is me actually it is uh, not a real picture because uh, i uh, actually i used it on the roads i use that thing on the road because it is safer than a common road bike and it is a a, whole, a new let's say speech maybe we can we haven't got the time but it's a very big speech we may uh, make some someday. We it's will, first of all, yeah, just uh, we're going to finish this up and I want you to say what you need to say. We, I promise you, you will be back for sure, Marco. I, you have so much, so many interesting things to say and I, I think everyone's really enjoying this. So, and I love this picture too. And let me just say that right here. I used it for the thumbnail for our video here. I, I love it. So uh, we have a question here from Andrew again. Your no, it doesn't looks... have any suspicion because it is a frame that works. All I made right. the frame that is just elastic enough to get to have uh, a good uh, performance, both with uh, um, some comfort. The rear axle just bend a bit, so just the, those few millimeters gave uh, a nice uh, performance and comfort. Comfort, it is comfort. Actually, you can use uh, tires, bigger tires, but um, since uh, the frame, the frame, it is made of carbon, but not as stiff as, uh, as you can. So a little uh, elastic. And if you got a fairing made of uh, plastic, uh, plastic panels, it is comfortably, even it doesn't sound too loud if you take an all and so on. So it is uh, another secret. Here it is me and uh, my, a friend of mine, Marco Zanardini, competed uh, com in the competition. Next one. And this is Sofia with another version of the Formula One car. It is the first, my first one, just uh, with a different fairing. And it is uh, the one for the next year for Marco, that is uh, Marco Zanardini, the, the guy before. Next one. Another study. It is a three wheel. This is called the Tumber. Sofia called it the timber, and uh, it's a completely different thing. It is, uh, of course, a trike, a, a delta trike, electrified. So on the front, there is my wife that has, she hasn't got a very strong, uh, uh, she hasn't got a lot of power on the pedal, so it is electrified. And it is fun because you can talk with the people uh, uh, over there on the other seat, and they uh, on, in, on holidays and on, in the summer is uh, crazy it's crazy fun and it is of course on, on the holidays with uh, elisa elisa doesn't pedal at all she doesn't use any bike but with this bike she uses uh, it's, for right. me it's very good next next one next one another project this is called uh, the the rev hth hth means i wait well because uh, in my first thought, it was, uh, I want something as fast as hell and maybe could be as dangerous as hell. All the construction, you can see all the construction on my YouTube channel. Next one. This is the frame. 
it is just made of pieces of other bikes. I have some stuff in my cellar and it is all welded together just uh, with carbon tape. So, uh, yeah, I've easy... got people, Marco, that are, are already saying they want to binge watch your YouTube channel during the lockdown. So we will, okay. uh, we will point people in the right direction. Let's kind of go quickly through these. Uh, we're going to just have you back for, uh, go ahead through these last ones here real quickly. Yes. These are all the history of this rev. Uh, this is a rev first version, first ride. And uh, as you see, it is very minimalistic. It is, it was 11 kilos uh, weight, um, uh, kilo uh, weight. Yes. Next one. And this is me at the, my first international competition. World Championship it was in France um, uh, in 2019. And in my category, the unfairing category, I was fast. I was with Larry. <laughs> I was with Larry and I could beat Larry, even if he's so strong, so fast. And it was fourth of my category, so fourth position. And uh, it was uh, a lot of fun, a lot of sat satisfaction, and 11th overall. Another race, uh, this is the Italian uh, 2019 race. So, so fast, uh, even if it was a, a do-it-yourself bike. And uh, very nice, very nice uh, experience. Next one. But I use it on the roads. And this is another different uh, way to use but uh, uh, every now every every time you you meet uh, a road biker with this bike it's a completely different history you are a, another vehicle they they think you are electrified they think you are uh, with a motor you are cheating i don't know because uh, it is uh, so fast you know you know how could uh, our common bike be uh, fast with uh, with this geometry and uh how about bike, this question marco so i'm yes. sorry to interrupt you but so i know this must be on a lot of people's minds all these amazing builds that you have put no, together no, here no, so no. fast are, are you going into business with this or is this strictly a hobby no no no, no. it's just a big hobby and uh, i like uh, so much but uh, business i don't i don't think it will never be especially in italy uh, because of mentality uh, i just uh, build the bikes for my friends because they had an open mentality but just one percent of the italians had, have this mentality so it cannot be for the italian people for the italian market a business it can be right. that won't happen right, let's go to the next one here and then these some shots of you working away here on the yes carbon, huh? just i just put this picture to to show my table my my factory it's just my cellar, and uh, this is the way I build something uh, in carbon. I do like carbon fiber because it is actually cheap. Uh, it's cheaper than aluminum for me, for welding aluminum, because I can make anything with, by myself. And on, the, on my YouTube channel, I show some tips and tricks, just uh, my, my, my issues with the building and my tricks. Uh, just uh, for people who want to make the same thing. And uh, as you see, uh, I use just uh, some, uh, some cutter, some thing that uh, is in every, in every house, I think. Some, some schisters, some, uh, it's very easy to, to use carbon with this, uh, uh, with this procedure. If you want something more professional, you go to, to, to someone who builds for for work, for his work, his own work. But on my YouTube channel, you see all these procedures. Everything I can show, I show. For example, this is a seat and so on. Very, it's very simple. I love carbon fiber. If there uh, were not carbon fiber, I didn't make any any of this bike. It's, it's, it's as good as simple as simple. You just. Uh, you just have to use the mask. I have always my mask in my ma on my mouth, even not for the coronavirus, but yeah, everyone's powder. wearing those now anyway. So you might as well yes. wear it when you're uh, working on your carbon fiber. Yes. And there's some more. Very this nice. Is, yeah. More. Uh, this is just the PVC procedure of um, of of uh, giving it a shape, 
and uh, on my YouTube, YouTube channel, you can see even this. PVC is a very nice, uh, um, it's very nice thing because you can bend and it is thermoformable and you can, as you see, tape it uh, with a carbon tape and uh, you can have any, any, any pipe in the shape you want. Uh, of course, it is not structural, it is just for the shaping. And this is, for example, the inside, this is another bike. It is a 20 inch bike. It is, it is called the Rev 26. Answering the question before, yes, I've made a Rev with 26 inches uh, uh, wheels, as you see, for people not, to, not told me because I want to know if the HTH geometry is, uh, let's say, affordable, is uh, people can use that uh, the geometry that is not me. Maybe I am, uh, uh, in this picture, you see both uh, of these bikes. I've just finished uh, the first one, the one in front, 26 inches, little uh, higher because it is a low racer, but not so low as the uh, the other one on, on the, you see on, on mm -hmm. the picture, but, uh, now I cannot test it, but since uh, we are uh, in, in the time we can go out, uh, I'll put some of my friends, maybe Mino or maybe Serafino, and see if it is fast or not. And it is uh, uh, we, um, it has a disc brake, so something different. And it is completely adjustable. In this picture, you see the the seat that is very on the on the on the rear because. Uh, it is uh, on my on my measures, but uh, you can put it 10 centimeter in the front, and so uh, Mino can use it. Uh, can use it. So I want to test: is it fast? Is it faster than the other one? Is it is comfortable. Can Mino drives it? Uh, so a lot of questions I want to answer because it is my aim. And the final one, of course, me and my daughter on the bikes, confronting, <laughs> and uh, it's. It's uh, um, a photo of our challenge. So just look me and uh, let's see who's faster. That's it. It's it's about racing, but it's not always completely about racing. No. Final question not. here. I can answer. Um, uh, Larry wanted to know about the World Championships, and as you know, Marco, no, they've no, been no. just this it, past week they canceled uh, the they canceled. the the championships this year in, in the Netherlands, unfortunately. So we're hoping for next year. We were planning to attend, and uh, I was hoping to actually see you there yes. as well. So we're going to have to at least uh, wait for another year before that happens. Marco, what a wonderful uh, opportunity to learn your story. You know, we talk about bringing our viewers on the show, and it's a treasure to be able to uh, to talk to many of them, and, and you fall in that category. Um, we are going to have you back. I know there are many other things that you uh, so want many. to talk about. We'll go, we'll go back. Maybe we'll focus in on a, a couple of the bikes that you're working on at the time. And I want to talk about riding and biking in Italy. I know you have some very strong ideas and opinions and descriptions of what goes on there. So we're going to have to have you back and talk about that as well. So uh, Marco and uh, Sophia, uh, it, it is great to have both of you on the show. Uh, any final thoughts? The story is, uh, there are many other words to say. Uh, I'm afraid I was so long <laughs> because I want to speak uh, uh, and uh, my speak is low, so please uh, be patient with my Italian. But I want to be in the show some other times because uh, there are a lot of things to to focus on because I want you to show Italy and uh, bikes in Italy and uh, not only construction, but uh, this world because uh, it's interesting. I promise we will do that, and we will be in touch. Uh, it's it's great to have uh, met you, and and I think I've made a friend. I hope uh, you feel that way too. Sorry, I want to to say hello to Larry because uh, I want to underline it is a great friend of mine, and uh, if the World Championship is, is cancelled, if not, uh, it will be he would be in Italy together with me on holiday, and we could share some rides together in Sapiti we cannot because uh, we are friends so Larry I, I'm very proud of have, uh, Larry as a friend you should be he's a great guy uh, and 
we will uh, we will pass that along if he's not still on here. So, Marco, thank you so much thank once you. again. Uh, you, you take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you next time. Very good. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All right, guys. Let's move along now to our Ask Me Anything uh, session, folks. Uh, let me bring on right now our pal, Pat Franz from TerraCycle. Pat, are you there? I'm there. You are right oh, yeah, there right. in the shop. So uh, let's queue up the pictures. And guys, once again, uh, if you have questions about any sort of uh, add-ons or accessories for your recumbent, this is the guy to talk to. And so pop them up on the okay. chat and, uh, and, and we'll talk about them. We'll take just a few minutes and uh, we'll talk to Pat about uh, the latest here at TerraCycle. So Let's get that first uh, slide up if we can. And uh, Pat, I'm going to have you uh, take it away. Okay. Well, the first thing I wanted to say is- Yeah, go uh, ahead. Uh, Mel and Janet say hi to you. Uh, <laughs> I ran into them when I was riding my bike over here today. So Right, so the recumbent sure PDX. Today, that's so. uh, Mel and Janet, the owners there. And uh, hello, guys. I don't think Mel ever watches anyways, but uh, you know, maybe I'll take a little clip of this and send it to him. So very good. Okay. So that so our, is our TerraCycle. Yeah, tell us. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the building we bought in 2012, um, about 5,000 square feet. And uh, yeah, we like it. Got big, tall ceilings and big, heavy floors and lots of electricity. So we love it there. That's a little uh, open house party we had, uh, a bunch of the locals there. Um, it was a tradition we used to do after the... Uh, the Oregon human powered races every, every, um, uh, last weekend of May. And, uh, those races have closed down. So we're going to have to, uh, be a little more, more direct about, uh, just causing a party to happen, but that's going to be hard to do this year. So we'll see. Yep. And that's a little fun picture I threw in there. Cause that's uh, just about exactly a year ago after Spetsy, uh, going off for a little, uh, tour across Germany. So, that was a lot of fun. Good, good memories. A year ago, how much has changed? And um, yeah, that's an overview of the shop. Uh, you can probably tell where I'm sitting, actually, by looking at that red toolbox. Um, but uh, over on the right hand side is our Haas lathe. And uh, Quentin is actually in today working on some parts for a friend of his. Um, and then that big machine in the middle is our uh, machining center. We make a lot of parts on that. Um, a lot of the parts you see are made on that. Um, and then kind of hard to see what's in the background, but there's, you know, raw stock and shears and other milling machines and other lathes and things like that. So, all right, Trike is loaded with your products. Yeah, uh, these are uh, some of our bar end shifter mounts that clamp on a, the end of your handlebars, even if you have a bar end shifter on it. And then uh, they hold another tube that goes up and over to hold computers or motor controllers or whatever you want. And uh, this is a couple of our uh, Elite 23 tooth idler side plates coming off the milling machine. Um, and you can see the ones in the back are slightly different than the ones in the front because they get machined on one side and then machined on the other side and then they're done kind of thing. But uh, the blue stuff is coolant. Um, you keep the, keep the chips and the cutters cool and the, blow the chips away. And that's just a few of our flags, kind of just a colorful shot. Um, that's not even all of them. We make another dozen more. <laughs> Yeah, at least now. you make a laid back pack report flag as far as I, I, I We do, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful there, work. I don't remember. Uh, no, no uh, I don't think so, but it's uh, it looks a lot like the angle tech and uh, it's that green and, and yellow one. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right. So we've so had a couple of comments yeah. already. Let's, uh, as you know, uh, Pat, this is an uh, international audience, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a question that uh, has already been, been answered online, but I think it's important to, uh, that's uh, from uh, Mark Lovegrove and Julie, and they're using your products. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, that's it. Uh, the question is, who's your European distributor, Pat? Uh, so, is uh, Ecleta. So Ecleta.com, uh, they're just outside of Frankfurt. And uh, 
Kirk Seifert is a longtime uh, recumbent person um, and very knowledgeable. And uh, so, yeah, ecleta.com. All right, let's go on with the questions. We have some already. Uh, I have a wind wrap, but as I'm quite tall, the fairing doesn't come back far enough. Is a, is a longer and wider fairing that will give longer and wider covering and wrap more? Um, is there one, uh, I guess, uh, of a fairing that will cover uh, longer and wider riders? Um, I, I'm guessing they probably have, have a trike um, is what they're asking about. Um, we do have a mold that will go wider and longer, um, and it's been very very difficult to get the time to do all the prototyping necessary to to get that finished up um and as to when we'll get to it i i, I just don't know <laughs> okay so stay in touch on that one yeah yeah but we can uh, with with that mold we can come back uh, about another four to six inches uh longer than our our standard um uh, trike fairing so, okay. Here's a good question from uh, Mike Mowat. Pat, have you experimented with larger diameter bearings with the rollers moved out near the teeth versus closer to the axle? I'm wondering if there are pros and cons of this. Uh, so idlers on be uh, idlers, uh, bearings on idlers, um, eight millimeters is, is the standard that, that most people use. Um, an eight millimeter bolt or an eight millimeter shaft is uh, strong enough for um, most applications. Uh, there are some production things that use 10 and 12. Um, but going to really big bearings like Rand's did uh, with a 5 8 ID bearing um, hasn't been necessary. And I mean, basically, the bearings don't wear out uh, on an idler. Uh, unless something happens to them, dirt gets in them or water gets in them or whatever, uh, they'll last tens of thousands of miles. Um, so bearing size uh, doesn't need to increase because of the loads. Uh, if you go to a larger bearing, uh, you have more friction in the bearing so uh, and more steel in the bearing, so it's heavier. Uh, so you can make the idlers much lighter by using a, a standard eight millimeter bearing. So uh, that's our most common one, but we make bearings, uh, make idler bearings uh, with uh, six millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, five eighths and three eighths. So, we have a, a lot of different options for you if you've got a bike that uses a different sized uh, idler shaft. All right, very good. Let's move on to another sort of accessory. Uh, do you have any plans for a GoPro type camera mount, say self-recording while riding? I th think you have more than plans, don't you? Um, we've got all kinds of pieces that you can make whatever sort of uh, camera mount you want from it. Um, if you want some suggestions, uh, just email us and, and we'll let you know. Um, we've got ways of doing it off the front of a trike, uh, the trailer post or, or the boom or off the back of the seat. Um, on a bike, we have things for handlebars uh, and uh, back of the seat, um, including right up by your head here like this. Um, and we've got all kinds of things for neck rests and stuff. And then you extend that out and up and, and put, a, put a camera right there, which is kind of a nice point of view to, to kind of see what you see as you're riding down the road. All right. Now I've got a couple of comments and questions. Well, I think we'll finish up here uh, with uh, more to do with uh, fairings. First of all, from uh, Daryl Jordan, this was a website subscriber. He asked what the possibilities of adding rear and front fairings to the trikes for all weather riding. We've talked about, you can briefly talk about the front yeah. fairings. I don't know about the rear fairings. Do you, have you had any thoughts about that? Go ahead. Well, we used to do uh, rear fairings, uh, quite a lot of them uh, for two wheelers um, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, and we did, in fact, a, a, these were, were cloth fairings uh, with a, with a um, metal frame and lightweight metal frame and, and cloth fairings. Um, and we did one for trikes as well. Um, the difficulty is it's really, really hard to attach to all sorts of trikes. If, if we just focused on a couple of brands or something, uh, that, would be, that would be easier. Um, but in order to do it on a wide variety of things, that, that just proved to be very, very difficult. Um, they do help. They do give you a little bit of speed. They give you quite a lot of color and visibility. Um, not enough people wanted them. So uh, we were busy with other things and kind of moved on. Um, Those were the tail sock 
things, tail right? Tracks, yeah. Because yeah. we had them on our uh, on our Rand Screamer. Actually, they were they were very cool. People always used to think we kept beer back in there. They were always asking. <laughs> it's like a velomobile. Now that I think about it, people never know what's inside of a velomobile. Right, yeah, they wonder what's what's in the, there. Yeah. The mystery, uh, the mystery box. So, all right, and then uh, let's finish up here with. Uh, there was a this there was a discussion on Bent Rider about the winter mount that I know you've had for a little while now. It was an improvement over the previous one, uh, and the uh, the guy thought I think it was uh, I be dizzy. I think isn't that his oh, name? Yeah, yeah. yeah he and uh, he he thought it was a great improvement over the previous method, which which it is. And the one kind of question that came up had to do with midsole cleats, uh, and since that moves the cleat down and your foot up yeah. he was concerned there was some concern over clearance with the fairings have you well, given that some thought or yeah so with it with a trike fairing uh, specifically like that um your feet are out front uh if you're the toe if your tips of your feet that your toes are higher uh you need to raise the front of the fairing up and you can do that there's quite a lot of range in the adjustment range to do that um but you need to be able to see over the fairing to see far enough down the road and so um, you either need to bring your eye height up to compensate for that or keep the, the, the fairing down uh, a little bit lower. Um, we recommend that you're able to see 15 to 25 feet ahead of you. If you can see something on the ground that far ahead, that usually works pretty good. Um, but you know, as, as you can see, as you, as you raise the front of the fairing, your, your sight line is going to move up and move farther out the road. So um, you know, even with a trike, with a fairing, with, with a fairing raised pretty high, you have better sight lines than a velomobile typically. Um, but you know, just for general riding around the road and stuff, it's, it's really useful to be able to see you know, what's out there that distance out. So um, a common misconception people have is uh, with the fairings, that you're going to be looking through the fairing and you can see through the fairing it is transparent um, but you want to be able to see over the fairing for almost all of your your riding uh, to see where you're going um, you know if you're going at slow speed and you're getting close to things or whatever you can look through the fairing and see it but um, you know when you're riding fast you don't want to be able to count on being able to see through the fairing. There might be, you know, glare from the sun or rain might be on it or something like that that makes it hard to see through. So we always recommend that you're looking over the top of your fairing. Uh, you can look, you know, just barely over the top of your fairing. And as long as you can see the road uh, 15 to 25 feet out, that, that works well. All right. Terrific. Uh, Pat, let's uh, finish up with maybe your evaluation of what's going on uh, at uh, TerraCycle with uh, your, I know you've made some changes there to accommodate the yeah. uh, the viral uh, epidemic. So tell us what's going on and uh, how, how are you faring in <laughs> Another right. fairing uh, answer. How are you doing with uh, with uh, production and sales and all that? Tell us where you are with that. So uh, we're still open and running. Um, sales are down. They're 75, 80 percent of where we would have expected them this year, which um, given the circumstances, I, you know, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, but uh, it's certainly more complicated to um, make things now. Um, about half the people are working from home. So we have communication issues we didn't have before. You can't just walk over there and ask. You've got to type it into your computer or call them up. And uh, so that that changes things a bit. But then just around the shop here, for the few of us that are here working, uh, we've had to rearrange things and be much more conscious of the things we touch and uh, how we how we walk around the shop. Um, you know, if Quentin is running the milling machine, um, you have to walk around the backside of the milling machine. You know, not the old habit of just walking past the front of the milling machine where he is. Um, but, you know, by doing that, we can maintain um, well over six feet, you know, 20 feet would be pretty easy for us uh, most of the time. So, um, but we've had to, you know, change everything to, like this toolbox behind me, we've got tools in that one and there's another black toolbox back there. That We've got a lot of common tools. Uh, you need to go get an end mill and you open the drawer and you get the end mill out. Um, but maybe someone else just opened that drawer and got an end mill out and touched things. So you gotta be aware of all those things um, and, and a lot more communications about 
you know, where you've been. Uh, we're going around sanitizing everything and we, you know, we tag things when it's been sanitized. You pop a little tag off when it, after you've touched it. So I know it's, you need to do it again and stuff like that. It's a learning so, process. It sounds a, like a lot of little things. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, we've labeled pens and everything like that. So normally we've got pens and Sharpies all around the shop and it's like, well, now you got to, is that one of mine? <laughs> right. I, I picked that one up without, you know, having to sanitize it later. Uh, so it, it just a lot more complications, but we're still running um, and um, making parts. So okay, so people uh, can continue to order as they obviously have, and you'll yeah. you'll get it to them. So yeah. sounds great. And as to the shop itself, Pat is uh, I know uh, starting to work on some video for us. We're working on a bent expo video. And uh, the folks that uh, have seen the first two that we produce, we've got another one coming out. I'll tell you guys about here in just a, a minute about what's uh, in the schedule. But yeah, Pat's going to shoot some video for us. He has some amazing machines. Through, yeah. uh, and uh, there was one uh, video you just posted that I uh, also um, shared on the Layback Back Report uh, Facebook page of, uh, I think, one of your milling machines. They're, they're incredible. So Pat's going to give us a little tour. We're going to talk uh, more specifically about what goes on at Terra cycle in that uh, bent expo video so i appreciate you helping yeah. me out on that and you guys can look for that soon yeah. all right right all right so right. pat i think we're going right. to end the ama session here please don't go you have a few minutes oh yeah yeah i've got a, i've got I'm, i promised everyone that we're going to do uh, a panel discussion i want you on the panel for at least okay. this one section if you wouldn't mind so you stick sure. around and larry if you can bring up uh, peter and doug and uh, let me uh, let me if any and and folks, if you have any questions for the panel, um, just throw them out there. But I've got a, a couple of things here I wanted to talk about because I'm tired of having these guys on the show, introducing them, saying goodbye. And that's it. So uh, instead of having them just watch from home, let's give them a little something to do. Peter, Doug, thanks for uh, being with us today here is what we're going to talk about. Direct and indirect steering on a trike. How about that, right? So I've been reading, I know nothing uh, about the specifics and technical aspects of this. I have an ice trike that has indirect steering, which I like, and I've, I've uh, ridden trikes with direct steering. It's different feel. It's nothing wrong with it. Um, but then I'm reading about this uh, thing called Ackerman compensation, uh, which has to do with how the trike is steered. Who wants to tell us what Ackerman compensation is? And then we'll talk about the difference between indirect and direct steering. Go. <laughs> well, so I'll, I'll do, a, do a whack at it. I'm going to go so find got, some wheels. I'll be right back. <laughs> you've got three wheels on the ground and you're going around a corner. They're obviously going in three different arcs. Um, so Ackerman basically is an attempt to get as close to those three arcs as possible. You don't want two of them to be going in, in along their arcs. And another one is going in a completely different one, which will cause scrubbing on the, on the tires. Right. And that wears out tires a lot faster. And uh... it, it wears out tires. It affects the steering. Um, <laughs> Peter knows what I'm going to do. We're... The steering draggy and, and um, slow you down as well. Yeah, perhaps we need a demonstration of some yeah, sort. Which, which uh, oh, it looks like Doug's got a little something going. Yeah, so I went, I went Larry, to go, get, go some, ahead. get some wheels here. So basically what, what happens with Ackerman steering is you've got three tracks. Let me kind of make it more like a tadpole trike so we can see what it looks like. When we want to make a, I'm going to make a left turn, which is going to look right. We want this arc to turn differently than this arc. So this wheel actually bends under a little bit to compensate. Right, because it's so got the thing, inside track. Correct. So it's got an inside track. And basically what Ackerman does is allows to keep the track parallel, even though the bike is now into a turn. So you can see kind of, it's hard to see on this video. Maybe I'll do something in an infographic at some point, but you can actually see the way these sticks bend as I'm turning them to show how that works. And basically it's so that you keep maintain a parallel track throughout the entire arc of your turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's to save wheel, the, save the tires and wheel scrub. So, well, it's we actually it's actually to save your ass because what happens if you don't yeah. have this? You roll the trike. Yeah. Oh, so it's a safety, <laughs> safety issue as well. Among other things, yes, it takes the center, yeah. keeps the center of gravity in the same place. 
Right. Well, of course, rolling your trike would put less wear on your tires, but I don't think true. That's but it's good. tough on the it's tough it's on the fun. helmet and the shirt and the jersey. You know, on the top. Exactly. All right. So, and how about the difference between direct and indirect steering, Peter? You, I, I want to ask you about this. So, if someone comes in looking for a trike, um, are, is it is it just a matter of trying them out, or how, how would you how would you suggest one versus the other to them? Well, you know, first thing I would say, is some people like chocolate and some like vanilla, and that doesn't mean half of us are wrong, but my favorite. <laughs> I would say that, uh, you know, with direct steering, the, the handlebar is attached directly to the kingpin, and the handlebar turns a relatively small arc. So moving the handlebar a relatively short distance makes a relatively sharp turn. So you could say that a trike with direct steering tends to be nimble, or if you if you do like it, you'd say it tends to be nimble. And if you don't like it, you'd say it tends to be squirrely because squirrely and nimble are the same thing by two different people, right? It's a, two different opinions about the same characteristic. So direct indirect steering, the handlebar pivots on the frame and the handlebar is quite a bit farther from the pivot. So you move the handlebar a greater distance. See, I'm demonstrating with my, you can't see my hands, but they're here they are. At the end of, the, of your arms. Well, you yeah, can do change the leverage on it and get different. Well, you can, yeah, yeah. But but you're still moving the, your hands farther, and uh, so it tends to be a little more stable at higher speeds. Um, then, of course, there's long wheelbase bikes and short wheelbase bikes. Something with a 27, a 700C or a 26 inch rear wheel is going to have a longer wheelbase than something that's all 20s. So the longer wheelbase will tend to make it steer a little more slowly, a little more stable, a little less maneuverable. But really the thing to do is to test ride a wide variety of things. You want to go somewhere where they have a variety of brands. You know, you can try everything from one brand. Oh, I rode 17 bikes from one brand. That would define which brand we're talking about, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're giving it away. Anyway, <laughs> you want to try a bunch of different brands because you know, every company has its own flavor and they tend oh, yeah. to work the same. Well, for one thing, it's the designers think that way and that's what they like and they build bikes that are like that. The other thing is that they want to use common parts so they don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time and have 14 different kinds of handlebars. So the they're similar. You want to try several different brands. You know, three or four brands anyway would be great, but more is better. Okay. Uh, I think that's a, that's a nice uh, rundown, at least answers a question that a lot of people are always talking about. I, I've heard it described as, uh, as like power steering, uh, indirect steering is more like power mm -hmm. steering. And I, I, have, well, I would say it's somewhat like that, but yeah, there, there are things you can do with indirect steering, uh, where you can have a different feel, uh, when you're close to straight yep. than when you're turning more. Um, yep. so yeah, but it's definitely it, it's definitely a Goldilocks thing. You really got to get out there and try them and find which one you like. Um, yep. It also directly translates into how the road feels too, because some roads that are nice and smooth aren't going to have much difference to your arm feel, but you get on a road that's very bumpy and it has a very different feel to it depending on the kind of steering you're dealing with. We've yeah. had customers with sore wrists and direct yeah. steering transmitted shock more directly to their hands. Indirect steering, the shock was much more attenuated and their hands were more comfortable uh, with indirect steering. We've had, I think, two customers in, since 1995 that felt that way. So it's yeah, not it, common, but it does happen. Yeah, our roads are probably not as nice as yours then because we have that happen more often than not. Okay. Where people will, they will get a direct steering trike, they'll go out and they'll ride it, then they'll come back and try an indirect steering trike and they'll say, wow, that's so much smoother. And the reality is it's just what, what they felt, not really the, the yeah. ride itself. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay. And what right. you feel is that's the important thing, right? Yeah, I mean, you are more yeah. isolated from the road with an indirect steer. Yep. yep. Whether you Very like that good. or not, that's up to you. All right. Very good, guys. Thank you. I, I'm going to leave it there. We're going to save the other questions for uh, for next week, perhaps. But thank you all very much for that uh, scintillating discussion of direct and <laughs> indirect cool. steering. So thanks, guys. All right. Okay. Back to me, if you would. And uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up, and we'll finish it off here, guys. So uh, next uh, Sunday will be um, uh, another town hall a very special town hall uh, laid back bike report. It's going to be all about bent riding musicians and uh, more specifically the actual music 
of the Bent Riding Musicians. I have contacted, uh, right now we've got five coming on. We've got Kevin Brown and John Hodkin from uh, the UK. And we've got uh, Tim, our own Tim Kane panelist, uh, David Brandenburger. Uh, he's down in New Zealand. He's the guy that has the solar trike at hauls the solar uh, paneled uh, trailer with him all around the world. Uh, and uh, Jonathan Garcia, who has also been on the, sh on the show from Portland. And uh, he's going to uh, he's going to play as well. So these guys are all recording uh, songs for us, original pieces, um, some of which have to actually do with recumbents and some of it just to entertain us. So we're going to talk briefly with each of these guys and listen to their music. Uh, it's quite a departure for us, something I've been working on for a while. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we're looking forward to having them on. That's going to be next Sunday, May 3rd, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on the Laid Back Bike Report Town Hall. We have uh, our next regularly scheduled Laid Back Bike Report will be uh, the week after that, May 10th at 2 p.m. And uh, I haven't got it scheduled quite yet, but you'll be hearing about that shortly. So, And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the Bent Expo videos, we've been working hard on that. Ice Strikes is almost ready to go. I think that'll probably be posted the next day or so. Uh, that'll be an interesting look uh, at what they're doing there in Cornwall, England. We've got Cruise Bike and Azub coming up after that and a few more others that we're working on. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes open in the uh, Bend Expo playlist here at the Laid Back Bike Report uh, uh, YouTube channel. All right. So please, uh, let's get that banner up there here. If you wouldn't mind, uh, please like, subscribe, and if you uh, can become a uh, patron uh, of the Laid Back Bike Report on Patreon. Um, that is That can be done for as little as a dollar a month. We just added another Patre uh, Patreon patron yesterday. We really appreciate those. If you can afford to do that, that helps us out a lot. If you can't, no worries. Uh, we appreciate all the support you guys give us just by watching. Uh, the Patreon dudes can get their pictures put on that little screen behind me. Uh, so uh, be sure to send us in a picture if you'd like to do that as well. So that's how you can help us out. I want to thank uh, all of my panelists. You've seen them all parading on and off here today. Can you bring yourselves up here, Larry, uh, all the guys? Let me say thanks to everybody. Uh, a great job today. Keep them coming. Here we go. Yeah, Peter. If you can find him, he's down below. There we go. Guys, thank you so much uh, for helping out today with uh, all the technicalities and uh, your support and your uh, information, and your advice. It's great having you as always. Uh, we will see hopefully all of you guys next week. And uh, folks, these are the guys that make it all possible. So uh, I guess if you want to come on back to me, guy, uh, thank you. And uh, that I think will wrap it up for today, folks. So until our next webcast from all of us here at the Laid Back Bike Report, so long, Bent Riders.